when you're in a life of worship, even when you're singing and you're, you're truly in a, a, an atmosphere, a spirit of worship, it gives you a spirit of humility. It makes you understand that, God, without you, I am really nothing. Yeah. And that's what, like to your point, when we don't worship and we don't live a life of worship, that's where the pride and the arrogance comes out and we just go about living our lives. And when we live our lives under our own will, that's where yeah. we lead ourselves astray. But we think we're doing, we think uh, we're doing good. Welcome to A Christian Podcast, the podcast where we have Christ-centered conversations. I'm your host, Kevin Wilson. Can you say yo, if y'all can hear me? No, I wasn't good enough. Let me hear it one more time. Yo. Hey, we get started for real now. Let's get it. Welcome to another episode of A Christian Podcast with Kevin Wilson. I got some guests with me today. I'm going to allow you guys to introduce yourself starting to my right. Che Cole. Michael Diaz. All right. So I got a couple of announcements before we get into it. Um, but I'm going to let you know off the top, we're talking about worship. And so even as we think about worship, just remember that worship is not one-sided, right? We'll get into it. But um, if you'd like to purchase your merchant or can I pray for you shirts, we have it over there. And if you're online, you can hit the link in the description to purchase those. Um you know, we shout out our online family every episode. And this time we have Horatio from Atlanta. So what up, Horatio? Uh, appreciate you for watching. If you're watching from somewhere, um, if you're watching this, leave a comment that says who your name and where you're listening from. Because we just like, it's so mind blowing to see like the different places that people are, are, are listening from. It's like somebody hit me up today um, from Uganda and was like, yo, I want to come to podcast in the park. Like, I would love to be there. I was like, wow, like, that's crazy. Um, so it's just cool to see the impact. Um, if you'd like to partner financially with a Christian podcast, there's a link in the description or on that QR code. Um, and just it's just a way to partner with us, to partner with God, so that we can do this more often and do it um, at a bigger scale. And so if you'd like to partner with us, that's how you can do so. And our last thing before we get into it is um, if you'd like to ask a question, hit that qr code and you can ask a question live we'll have a little section or i might even answer it throughout the episode different questions that you have and what i don't get to i try to get those on social media or in our discord channel and you can join that in the link as well now y'all know i got a serious question before we get to the episode that is you got to pick one right the rest go forever tacos burgers or wings you gotta pick one well i'm pescatarian so i'm picking tacos <laughs> <laughs> all right not too bad so we pick one that's the one we gotta go with that's the one tacos burgers or wings i'm gonna take the wings 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 is solid i i probably like burgers the most out of all of those but i'm trying to think longevity you know, it's a lot, of, a lot of beef. Is that it's just not too good? I'm gonna go with the, the diversity of the taco. I feel like you can mix it up. You can see it's a lot of different things you can do. What y'all got? Just feel free to yell it out. Taco, taco today. We got a smart crowd. Wings. All right. What else you got? Tacos. Wings. All right. All right. Nobody going with burgers. Hey. Okay. We got one. We got one. All right. All right, cool. So we're talking about worship today, man. Um, and worship is a topic that I, and that we all should be growing in our understanding of each and every day, right? Here's an episode I did on, uh, me and my boy Gabe did on worship 2020, right? I haven't listened to it again, but I, I know for a fact that my understanding of worship from that episode versus where we are now is totally different because it is a process of growing, right? Um, Bible says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, meaning work out, meaning grow, <laughs> right? If you work out, you're gonna grow. Um, and so exercise those spiritual disciplines, worship, reading your Bible to gain understanding so that we can talk about it, right? So let's talk about the evolution. What was your understanding of worship like when you first gave your life to Christ? For me, it was worship in the sense of just what we do, 
in church services, right? So praise and worship. That was the extent of my knowledge of what worship is and what it was for me. Yeah. Yeah, I'd have to agree. Um, growing up, worship, I didn't even really hear the word worship, to be honest. It was more like we're going to sing before the word. And so mm. <laughs> the word worship really didn't come up until I went to college. So for me, when I first gave my life to Christ, you know, as a teenager, it was really it wasn't a heart posture it wasn't even you know t certain types of songs it was it was a foreign concept to me frankly it was just we sing songs before the word and that's probably the extent of it mm. nah that's real it's like like you said praise and worship yeah. and it's almost like worship on worship off yeah. right worship when we sing it and not worshiping when we're not singing and it's like yo we that that's that's like not it right we're gonna talk about how we get to understand that it's not it but like i was the same way like worship listening to music you know singing the song that's worship and it is i don't want to say it's not but it's a uh, it's one element and it's actually if we think about it it's a, it's a i want to say small it is it is a pra a good chunk but it's not like in my head it was 100 percent. that's what worship is right. now i understand that it's like i don't want to give it a percentage but if I had to, I, I might say like 10, yeah. right? Um, and so for somebody listening, like 10, that, that, <laughs> this is all I know. Um, and so we're going to walk through it. And we're going to go deeper in that, right? And so um, worship. Let me go to scripture, right? The Bible says to, let's all read it together, actually. I like when we get to read it together. Let's go to Romans 12, yeah. verse 1 through 2. You already know where I was going. Romans again that's Romans the book of Romans chapter 12 verses 1 through 2 all right I'm reading out the New King James but whatever version you have is totally fine in the New King James he says I beseech you therefore all that means is I I urge you I I encourage you I I have some kind of importance with this right um brethren by the mercies of God that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, and that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Present your bodies a living sacrifice, yeah. holy, acceptable to God. Which is your reasonable service. You know, uh, I think the NIV says your, this is your true and proper worship. Um, I, 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 like, I like that, how I, was, how I said. But so let's talk about that. Let's break this down. A living sacrifice. Mm -hmm. When we talk about sacrifices, it can seem a little scary. Like we think about people. I mean, it's real life. People do sacrifice like people. Um, people make sacrifice, you know, uh, sacrificial offerings and things like that. Um, but. When I sacrifice something, that means I, I give something up. Right. And so God is literally saying through Paul, you are the sacrifice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like your life is the sacrifice. And so let's talk about what that looks like. What, when you hear that, what does that mean to y'all? Jay, what, what, what does that mean when you hear a living sacrifice? Now or? Now, yeah, yeah, now. <laughs> yeah, now. Nah. <laughs> So when I hear a living sacrifice, I think, for me at least, it's coming to the end of myself, mm -hmm. coming to the end of my desires, uh, even the good intentions, right? Even the good things, um, quote unquote good, uh, even the good things that I think are um, important or um, even like those ambitions or those goals those dreams those desires that you may have mm -hmm. like coming to the end of that and realizing like my life is for god and for god to get the glory out of my life and it may not look like how i planned it Shit, how what? i envisioned it man right <laughs> yeah. it may look totally different and yep. it's not to say that he like we talked about last week or in the last episode um it's not to say that he won't use the gifts that he's already given you. Right. It just may not look like how you envisioned it looking like. Eee. All right, let's let's stop there. 
gifts. Let's just pause there for a second. Gifts, right? When we talk about our gifts, what we have, we didn't get to choose, right? Like, there's, there's we can ask for spiritual gifts, right? And God can give it to us based on his desire, his will, um, and his plan for us. But how we are built, we didn't get to choose. Like, I didn't get to choose to be born on this day at this time have this frame like it's certain things that are beyond our control and so there's a process that we have to learn how to recognize what we've been instilled with and how to steward those gifts so Che, for you what is that what did that process look like and it's, it's still ongoing but what does the early process look like for newly saved or on fire just beginning to be on fire Che? that's like i have these gifts but I have to submit them to God. Yeah, so, I mean, for me, like, if y'all see me, if some of y'all have been around me enough, but for those that don't know, like, I'm one of the biggest introverts that you'll ever meet. And sometimes you won't, like, you'll see this part of me now, and you'll be like, introvert, where, <laughs> right? But submitting that to God and that being a living sacrifice. So when I come up to you and speak, no, it took a lot of courage for me to do that. <laughs> nah, thanks, bro. <laughs> And that is me dying to myself each and every day. Um, and that's what it looked like practically um, until I recognized that you know, God has gifted you to speak and to proclaim the word of God, to help lead and guide other people into recognizing their, their gifts, pushing them into their purpose, mm -hmm. right? But it took me understanding and submitting that under the authority of, of God, of Christ, to understand like, you may be introverted, but that's not an excuse to do what I've called you to do. Yee. And so that is being a living sacrifice. In that yeah, way. man, that's good. So, all right, Mike, what does that look like for you? That process of understanding this is who I am. This is what I have. This is what you've given me to give to you. How do I give it to you? Yeah, so I guess when I think about that, um, I always struggled in school like from a social element like i didn't come out of my shell until probably about college uh, when i was forced to because uh, i went out i went to college out of state so i ain't know nobody i was like i if i'm gonna find a network i'm gonna have to make the effort to do so so uh, just like trey i'm naturally introverted but uh, i had to grow out of that but um growing up even though i had a, a bit of a social problem sometimes uh i i was always a smart kid mm. so I could use my some measure of intellect that I had that I was gifted mm -hmm. to your point and leverage that either into helping other people because I, I even as a kid I think I always knew I was designed to help people mm -hmm. like I didn't always know in what capacity that I was going to take his form but I always felt that in my spirit and so growing up it started off with intellect it's like you know I some of these things just naturally come a little bit easier to me so mm -hmm. if people are able to if they take the, the initiative to come approach me or I can even let them know that, hey, I, I do this and I'm, I'm pretty good at this. Like, I, I'd be willing to help you. They got to obviously accept the offer. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, I, I leverage that to yeah. create some relationships. And even today, you know, I, the things that I know, the, the knowledge that I have, I try to as best as I can freely give it away. Like, you know, so so freely have you received, so freely give. Yeah. That's, that's one of my favorite verses now. And um yeah. That's that's how I've implemented that. Nah, in my that's life. dope, bro. That's a good um, element of, of, of worship is to give what we have, because sometimes we think worship is only just to what we do strictly to God, but worship, in part, is actually how we treat people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. It says uh, um, in your Philippians chapter two it says in your rela relationships with one another have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage, right? But rather he humbled himself, taking the very nature of a servant, yeah. right? Yep. Serving others. So you have God in the flesh right. serving others, who is a servant before. And so that's part of worship is, is me saying, I have these gifts, I have these talents, I have this intellect, I have this, 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 insight this for whatever it is right how can i worship god and how can i do that through people yeah. with people yeah. so 
I think sometimes we always focus on the vertical relationship, yeah. but there's also a horizontal relationship with people that is part of our worship. So I, I really like um, the way you put that. So what about you? <laughs> perfect. I was going to I was going to say y'all feel free to ask me some questions, too. Um, and also put those questions you got in the in the uh, Q and A thing. So similar to both of y'all, we got three introverts up here. I know if you if, you, if you just came out of the podcast at the park, you're like, there's no way he's an introvert. I promise you, when I go home, <laughs> I I'm going home. I'm not. I'm going to sleep. I, like I'm not. It's not. It's a safe place. Yeah. Like so, it's I got to turn this on. Um, and part of that turning on is to say, okay, God, you stewarded me you, with. You've given me a platform, right? You've given me a heart for people. You've given me um, this, right? This is an un uncommon thing to steward. And so I'm like, okay, let me turn it on. And to do so in a way that people never feel like you're, you're, you're performing, right? Because like some people, they put on, but it's like, I can tell that like you're, you're, you're dragging it. Like you're, you're doing it and you're doing it in a way that's like, ah, oh, you know, let me, and it's like, nah, like do it in a way that people would never know that you weren't like this, right? Do it, serve people in a way that they would never know that you weren't a servant at heart, like, that, or that you, that it wasn't comfortable to you, right? And so for me, um, it's just like you guys, it's giving up who I am to God. And sometimes that's through people, sometimes that's just directly to him. Um, but it is that understanding of what I've been called to do, what we've all been called to do, and it's a submission process of saying, hee, sometimes, sometimes I ain't gonna lie. There's been times where I looked at a calendar and I was like, podcasting the part this week, I'm kinda, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm a little tired. I was like, I don't know how to pull this out. But it's like, Lord, this ain't, this ain't, this isn't my platform to steward. I'm just, I'm just giving, I'm just making work with what you gave me. I'm not, I didn't make, like, take God out of the equation. This is not a thing, I guarantee you. This would never be a thing. This is not, I couldn't do this on my own, right? And so even in that, it's like, yeah, all right, I'm going to give whatever I got to you, God. And however that looks is how it's going to look, but I'm going to do it to the, the best of my ability. And so it's just giving my all to God. Yeah. Um, Giving, giving your all. It kind of sparked a thought. Uh, I was actually going to go somewhere else, but worship is, is sometimes showing up. Showing up to yeah. do what God told you to do, right? Mm -hmm. and, and just being available to be used. Like that is your reasonable service, as Romans 12 said. Yeah. But also going back to what you said in terms of uh, how you worship is also how you treat others. I think that's an important thing to know as believers because sometimes, a lot of times, that can be the difference in someone's salvation journey. Yeah. How I treat my brother, my sister, the stranger, the the cashier, the waiter, the waitress, how I treat them, that could be the most like, oh, you got to, can I pray for you straight on the day, but you treating me like. Yeah, <laughs> like trash, yeah. And that's the difference, yeah. right? Like, So now I'm questioning like, are you even is that even real or you just or is that because the camera's rolling because you got a mic in your hand mm -hmm. that's that's who you are yeah right? or that's who you are on sunday but monday through saturday Eesh. is different we're gonna talk about sundays and we're gonna talk about that but i wanted to pick on that like um it's a life i have to give my life as a living sacrifice so there's times where you're doing something and God leads you to do something that you might not necessarily feel like doing. Yeah. We was bowling the other day, right? And uh, <laughs> there was a guy next to us and he was by himself and he was just bowling by himself. He had been there before we got there. He was there while we was there. And I was like, you know, I could tell he had been drinking a little bit, but I just felt led to just talk to him. And... You know, I ended up praying with him, and he was like, the prayer was cool, everything was cool, but the thing he said was like, yo, just thank you for talking to me. He's like, I be going places, and he's like, I just feel like nobody ever sees me. I'm always alone. Like, nobody talks to me. He was, he literally, he couldn't have cared. Like, I didn't have to say nothing to him. I could have just said, what's up? And he was like, yo, 
Like, bro, thank you for talking to me. And so worship is, I'm trying to bowl with my friends, but there's a person that needs a touch from you. Because we're just, we're extensions of God, right? It's like, it's like the, you got your arm, right? But it's like, I can't pick up my phone without my fingertips. And so it's almost like God's the arm, well, it's the whole body, but God's the arm is like, where the fingertips? If, if he just show up, like you got to do what he calls you to do in order for him to do what he wants to do. Because we always say like, you know, God is a God that sees, God is a God that hears. But it's like, yeah, and sometimes he does it through you, <laughs> right? And so it's that submission of saying, you know, I'm at Target, oh, maybe not Target right now. Uh, uh, I'm at I'm at uh, Publix, there we go. Uh, I'm at Publix and, you know, the cashier looks a little down or maybe just somebody walking through looks a little down. Like, hey, how are you doing? Can I pray for you? Or sometimes it ain't even that. Sometimes it's, I hope you're having a good day. Yeah. You ever have somebody just say that to you and, and they never knew. They they just kept it moving. But afterwards, you was just like, I'll be all right. Like, I feel a little better. It don't always have to be something big, but that that is a part of worship. Um, yeah, I mean, like, I knew you were about to say something. <laughs> the, the Bible says, like, that others will know that we are his by the way that we treat one another yeah. right and so to your point i can't be calling myself a christian without putting in the work to to take care of the people that i see he said how can you love a god that you don't see yeah. when you yeah. treat your brothers that you do see the way that you do you know like paraphrasing essentially nah, yeah um you you have to be willing to treat the people that you see with dignity and, and do unto others as you would have them do unto you like if you went to the bowling alley by yourself, maybe you were thinking about like, man, I really wish somebody would talk to me. You're just rolling the ball just to, to stay mm -hmm. active, to stop thinking about it. And then you finally have somebody come up to you. Like if you were in his position, mm -hmm. yeah. how much would that bless you? You really have to think about, you have to get into the customer's shoes. Like, mm -hmm. you know, some people think in sales, like you have to think about how would that make me feel and act accordingly. And it, it'll, it will change somebody's life sometimes. Yeah. Sure. Ah uh, man, so yeah, I, I think it's just I don't, I don't know. It's just a lifestyle of understanding that your life is not your own, yeah. right? Like this is a this body that I have, this life that I have is a is a gift. And when I think of uh, living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, I think of almost like um, we're a vehicle yeah. that like God gets to drive, mm -hmm. but it's like his ability is based on our willingness so it's like he gets in and says okay kevin today i want to go to freedom park through you but if i say i don't really feel like it today god he's not going to force me because that's how that's the type of god he is he's not a god a forceful god right he's a powerful god and a, a, and an all-powerful god he can do whatever he wants he could say kevin you're gonna go to freedom park <laughs> but he says I, I this is what i told you to do this is what i desire to do through you if you don't, that's on you, right? And so we have consequences for all that. But his, his, his whole thing is, I desire to use you. Yeah. That gives him glory. And so sometimes we limit him by doing what we want to do. And it's like we get so selfish and it's like, I don't, I don't want to do this. Yeah. Who are you? We're talking about God here. We're not talking about like, yo, check, can you do me a favor? We're talking about God. Like how comfortable have we gone to got to be like, I don't really feel like doing that. Bro, who are we? As the Bible says, who is, who, who is the potter? I mean, who is the clay, right? The creation to tell the potter, why have you made me this way? You're nothing. Abraham said, I'm nothing but dust and ashes. That's it. We're made from dirt and that's all we are. We get so humble, we get so, not humble, we get so arrogant and proud and we're like oh yeah i'm i this is not what i want to do i don't see anywhere you think them dudes <laughs> i look at the book of acts you think them dudes wanted to go around getting beat yeah you think them dudes wanted to die all of all of the apostles except for one died horrific deaths not like i'm talking about like crucified upside down beheaded 
stone like we're not talking about regular little cute little no do you think them dudes wanted to absolutely not but they said like as paul said i consider my life nothing if i'm not i'm paraphrasing this part if i'm not carrying out the will of god yeah and so it's like we gotta humble ourselves honestly and say god i'm nothing whatever you want to do on my best day i'm nothing on my worst day i'm nothing yeah your righteousness is as filthy rags the best the best 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 you got is dirt to god and he still loves you so um okay let's you got some yeah go ahead jump in the water (laughs) (laughs) no i think even as so putting what you just said into perspective and even how you mentioned at the beginning when we started how people are in other countries other places desiring to be here mm. at podcast in the park watching this right now wishing mm. that they had an atmosphere like mm. this when we put that into perspective from okay we're in america so from an americanized uh, perspective mm. the privilege that we have to be able to worship in a park in a public space mm-hmm. freely where our brothers and sisters some maybe even watching this do not have that privilege yeah. do not have that opportunity that should change the way that we worship out here yeah. in the church in general because yeah. it is like it is such an honor to be able to do that. and i i want to push excuse me everyone that's here today even as we transition eventually into worship to keep that in mind mm-hmm. as you worship in in this park as you worship let all the the stuff go let all the people around because that doesn't matter at the end of the day god's not going to ask me well what did kevin think about the way that you were worshiping on (laughs) in freedom park yeah (laughs) he's not going to ask me that nope he's not going to ask me well what did you think about kevin's podcast was it good or no did kevin do what he was supposed to do Mm -hmm. did i did kevin do what I've called and placed inside of you to do. Yeah. Che, worry about your own. Yeah. <laughs> Are you doing what I told you to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when we take that into perspective, it changes the way that we worship. It changes the way because this, even in this space, even in this place, mm-hmm. it's a privilege and an honor that we can't take for granted. Man, that's that's real, bro. And sometimes we're so worried about like, ah, what, are the, what does it look like? And you know what it really gets down to? Fear of man. And the Bible says in Proverbs, the fear of man is a snare or a trap, but those that trust in the Lord will be kept safe. And so literally, if you think about a trap, right, a trap ain't isn't something that's like open, right? Most traps are deceptive. They're hidden. And so you step into that trap and you block yourself from the blessings that God has for you because it's like this. You you limit your worship, right? Cause you're worried about perception yeah. and i'm talking i'm i'm saying this from experience yeah. I understand i'm not just you 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 know you give a little cool little hands up because that's comfortable <laughs> you limit your worship but but you're really limiting what god has for you yeah. he says he has things stored in the secret place right for those that come to him and so the real worshipers this, the time is has come where where the true I got excited. John four twenty three. Where the where the true worshipers will worship in what spirit and in truth. Truth is, God is good. Yeah, <laughs> truth is, God is good. Truth is, He's worthy of me looking crazy if that's what it come if that's what He desires of me, right? And so, you limit your you you. Worship helps you more than it helps God. Let's think about that. You worship God, right? And he desires your worship. God don't need your worship. If I never worship God another day in my life, he'd be fine. (laughs) I'd be jacked up, right? I'd be the one sent to hell, right? Because I decided to. So we we get so caught up even on our own self in worship that we're forgetting. Even in worshiping God, you get blessed. It says put on a garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. So if I'm heavy, by praising God, I benefit. 
Yeah, you know, uh, we've been going to a church recently, and, and they talked about uh, they're they're going through the the the, the tabernacle series, and um, they talk about when when the tribes would go to war, they would send the tribe of Judah first, yeah. because Judah was was the tribe that were the praisers. Yeah. You got to go into the war praising, the taking the victory yeah. with you in the in the spirit of praise. That's good. And the, the victory comes behind that. And, it, you know, like to your point, when you're in a life of worship, even when you're singing and you're, you're truly in a, a, an atmosphere, a spirit of worship, it gives you a spirit of humility. It makes you understand that, God, without you, I am really nothing. Yeah. And that's what, like to your point, when we don't worship and we don't live a life of worship, that's where the pride and the arrogance comes out. And we just go about living our lives. And when we live our lives, under our own will, that's where yeah. we lead ourselves astray. But we think we're doing, we think uh, we're doing good. Yeah, we really think we'd be doing good because a lot of times, like you won't see it manifest itself until months or years down the road. Yeah, the the choices that you're making now. Yeah, and so it's like that. That's that's part of the enemy's trap too, right? Like yeah. it, it's not a trap like a bear trap. You know, with a bear trap, if you stepped in a bear trap, them teeth yeah. in that trap gonna hurt you. You gonna know you in a trap immediately. His is more like a a gentle grip, and then there's like a little bit of poison that's like like leaking <laughs> into you it takes yeah. it takes some extra time just before you really start feeling the effects but then once you really down that road you you yeah. realize how far down the path you have made it uh, so, okay that's what pride will do okay okay so let's talk about this there because i like <laughs> i got excited so let's talk about i want to talk about worshiping god through difficult seasons yeah. or difficult times right because oftentimes people find it very easy to worship god when everything is great right it's just like how we do it with people when everything is great when everything is great at the job when everything is great with 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 your friends and everything life is smooth right everything's great swell wonderful right all the positive adjectives you can think but in the moment things get hard you see you know people might change people might shift in perspective People might not be consistent as they once were, right? And so sometimes when it comes to worship, it can be hard to worship God when life is hard if we don't have the right understanding of what worship is, right? Because sometimes we we say, we treat worship as if it's a reward for God. Yeah. <laughs> like, we treat, we treat worship as if like, okay, God, my life's great. Here you go. Yeah. And it's like, wait, that's... That's backwards, right? Worship begins anywhere. Worship begins just at the, the, the fact that you have breath in your body this morning. You have enough to worship him, right? Yeah. And so I just want to look real quick at uh, Job. Let's go to Job yeah. chapter 1. Um, I'm going to start at 20. I'm going to paraphrase the first, like, couple verses. Um, but in Job chapter 1, right, you have Job. Right, who is a man that says Job is a man who's blameless um, and righteous, right? And all the most righteous man in all of the East. And so you have a man who is considered as sinless as they come. Um, and it says that Satan and the sons of God come to God and say, and, and Jesus, uh, God says, Where have you coming from? Well, where are you coming from? And he says, Roaming back and forth on the earth. Right, doing what he does. Right, the, the Bible says the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, um, and so he's looking, he's roaming around trying to do that. And so God says, "Have you considered my servant Job? He's righteous. He's right." And Satan's like, mm, "Yeah, but doesn't he have good reason? Like his his life is great. He, he doesn't have anything wrong. He has a beautiful family. He has all the money." cattle livestock all the money and blessings that you could ever wealth that you could ever imagine why wouldn't he worship you and god says okay let's 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 play a little game right and so uh he says you know what well all of the things that that job has you can take them but don't touch job right and so that's where we at job one uh let me put one on, on this phone real quick and so again Understand that worship is not worship is not circumstantial. That's how we treat it sometimes. Life's good. Ah, I give you praise, God. Life's bad. Wh what are you doing, right? So let me actually start at verse thirteen. 
Now there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house, and a messenger came to Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them when the Sabians raided them and took them away. Indeed, they have killed the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. So here, you know, oxen and donkeys, that represents their wealth at the time. So that's like, yo, your whole bank account just got wiped out, right? It's just don't, every yeah, every every single dollar and dime you have, it just, they just, it's gone. So it's like, okay, that's one thing. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, the fire of God fell from heaven and, pr and burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I alone have escaped to tell you. Again, more of your stuff, gone, everything. While he was still speaking, another also came. The Chaldeans came, uh, formed three bands, raided the camels and took away, took them away, and yes, and killed the servants with the edge of the sword. I alone have escaped to tell you. Bro. You gotta go. Bro. And all right, one more. We got one more. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house, and suddenly a great wind came from across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house, and it fell on the young people, and they are dead. I alone have escaped to tell you. It was like okay before the, the family, right? It was like okay stuff, you know, possessions. We could get, this, we could, we could recuperate. Your family has died, right? And here's when we talk about worship. Verse twenty. Then Job arose, tore his robe, and shaved his head. He fell to the ground and worshipped, and said, "Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return there." The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed is the name of the Lord. And all of this, Job did not sin nor charge God with wrong. Bro, that sounds like we read it, it sounds cute. Like, okay, yeah, I could do that. Everything you own, every dollar in your bank account, every possession you have, your family has died. And immediately your posture is not to salt. Your, your posture is not to blame God your posture is not to say what's going on he tore his robe shaved his head fell to the ground and immediately worshiped God bro he just feel different yeah. I would, like I, I'm gonna be real where I am right now at this moment I don't know if that could be my initial my first posture my first reaction I can see myself working up my way to, to the point where I can do that. But I don't think right now, if I hear all of that news and, and say, you know what, God, I'm about to worship you. Yeah. So let's talk about what that looks like to actually worship God through trials, circumstances, because I think some people are actually hindered in life because they only worship God through positive times. Yeah. Right. So, um, Mike, share what that looks like for you as far as worshiping God despite circumstances. Uh, I, I think about like two specific circumstances in which that happened. You know, the first one was kind of a, uh, it was the first time I felt like I had asked God for something and it was like big and I was like, I'd had audacious faith for it and he didn't come through, at least not the way that I expected. And, um, it, it really, it hurt. And um, to be honest, like the first reaction to your point was not to worship God. It was, it really was to blame God. If I'm just going to be keeping it a hundred, like it was, God, you messed up. Like you, you, you failed. Like I, I did everything that you asked. Mm. I, I, faith without works is dead. I did the, I did the, the works mm. to back up the faith that I have in my heart. Like I even let it go a little bit longer than maybe I thought I should have. Mm -hmm. And you didn't, and you didn't show up and yeah. it, it it took some weeks it really took some weeks for me and at this point I w i'd actually started um being on a worship team like this was like the first time i'd ever been on a worship team in, in some capacity and it was hard it was hard to worship a god that i just saw like not show up in my life um but you know i, I thank my my family there and I, I think my my now wife as well we we had to we had to understand that in not providing what we'd asked, that God was actually preserving us, you know? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it it took continuing to 
to sing and to worship and to say, God, I don't understand why you haven't done this, but I will still believe that you are good and that your nature is good mm -hmm. and that whatever I'm going through, whatever this, this thing has happened to me now, my credit is bad or whatever, like I took a credit mm -hmm. ding because of this thing, mm -hmm. I'll still worship you and I still know that what you told me about our finances and where we're headed is still true, like despite the setback that I feel in the natural. and. It, like I said, it, it took some weeks, but, you know, that's part of why it's important to be a part of a church, you know, and have community. Yeah. Like, that's the biggest benefit of having a church is being locked into community. People that are serving the same God that you serve yeah. that still go through life issues yeah. and can help you get back to that place of worship where you understand my life is nothing. Like. Uh -huh. You know, I wanted it to happen my way, but that was my way. Yeah. God has his own way, and his way truly was better because now, because I hadn't fixed my, uh, I hadn't fixed the problem. Like, I, you know, I wasn't focused on the fact that I had a, a financial problem that was hindering some of the things that he wanted to do in my life. I was just focused on where he told me he, he was taking me. And so he needed to show me, like, you need to fix this problem before I can really bless you because otherwise you're going to squander it. And it took... I mean, yeah. that, that's years later. Like, I, I didn't put the pieces together until years later. But yeah. in that moment, I had to say, I don't understand this. I think I'm ready, but I'll, I'll still trust you. And I'll still continue to, to worship you. Like, and, and really through song, I'll continue to worship you yeah. in front of these people, even though I, I feel failed. Man. So that was, that, was, that was probably the first big one I had to worship through. But, bro, like, that's so powerful for you to share because, right, one, one thing you just admitted is that it took weeks. Yeah. Some people think like, okay, I I, I worship God. I, I got this bad report, right? I got this uh, diagnosis. I got this report of my 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 bank account, whatever it is, right? And they think, okay, I I I, I still know that I should praise God, so I'm gonna praise Him. But then I don't feel nothing different, or I, my life hasn't changed immediately. And so you think like, okay, I've done that. I did what I thought I was supposed to do. But I don't, I ain't get what I think I was supposed to get. Yeah. Oh God, are you, are you failing me again? You know, that's how I could feel for some people. But it's like, understand, some things take time, right? Because like you said, if, if God gave you what you wanted, you, you wouldn't be where you were supposed to be. Because most of the time our issue isn't the issue. Our issue is our understanding, our, our perspective of the issue. Because when we understand the grace of God, the sovereignty, the all-knowingness of God, and the fact that we are his children, and that his desire for us is always to prosper us and not to harm us, to give us hope in the future, right? When we, when we have that perspective in mind, we realize, okay, I got an issue at hand. God, you know I have an issue at hand, and you've also allowed, allowed it to happen. So it's not that it's out of your control, which oftentimes we think it is like, God, how could you let this happen? He knows, right? He allowed it just like with Job. He said, he, and, and he gave the devil limitations. He said, as for my servant Job, right? Everything he has, you can touch it, but don't touch him. So he's still in control, even in your heartbreak, even in your, uh, what looks like destruction in your life. He's, he's still God. And so I think a lot of times, like you said, church and having those brothers and sisters in Christ that can make you more aware in that season of like, hey, bro, I know this sucks. I am not gonna, I'm not going to act like it doesn't suck. But um, even in this, understand God's still good. Uh, what about you, Che? I actually, as I kind of sit here and, and listen to Mike's, uh, story I can honestly say you know by the grace of God I don't think I've ever had a situation where I can relate to that experience and I think that presents some challenges for me as I think um, of trying to witness to that mm -hmm. right um, and so because my perspective is one of from the outside looking in someone would be able to say your life has been good mm -hmm. it's hard for me to speak to that mm -hmm. and transparently i'm currently dealing with a situation from a loved one who is having that crisis of faith and it's difficult for me to speak to it mm. because from the outside in you don't understand you haven't been there. i haven't been in those shoes 
Um, but so it's hard for me to answer, and I don't want to. Nah, you good. I I appreciate that because even in itself, right? That's why I have people on the podcast. Could I do a solo podcast? Probably, but it's like it would be my perspective only, which is limiting in a sense. And so, um, I think even in that though, and it it depends on who it is and what the situation is. But like, it's like why we always should lead with the word, right? Because and again, I know because like the word. It's also in some sense, in some cases, because, right, if somebody doesn't believe the word, that's not, you can, it's just babble to them, right? But um, even taking biblical principles and making them understandable or or speaking in parables as Jesus did. Um, But even in that, right, even in your perspective, because I identify with you, like, I haven't had that much, like, life's been pretty good, right? But there's still... Even for me, there's still some areas of uh, disappointment right. or failed expectations. And I never, similar to Job, I never, I don't think I ever said, like, God, this is your fault. But I think I, my question was always, like, how could you allow this to happen? Yeah, like, what, a, what where are you in this situation? So uh, I think that's, I think that's a, a, a real perspective. And so I think, um, so I think in having those experiences, I think that's the importance of worshiping in seasons of everything is good. Yeah, yeah. Having that perspective to continue to work, like even though I don't, I can't, I don't have a experience that is similar to Mike's. While I have, mm-hmm. by the grace of God, I haven't been through that. Right. I'm going to worship, and I'm going to. Um, as the Marvin Sapp song says, praise him in advance, right? Yeah, yeah. And continue that posture, having that posture, so that when something does happen, the basis of my faith isn't based on life has been good. Mm-hmm. And so now I don't know how to worship because life isn't quote unquote good. Because yeah. then we get into the question, what is good, right? Who's the determination, who makes the determination of what is good or life is good? Mm-hmm. Um, and so in looking and thinking of that, I think that's the importance of even in the good times continuing to have a posture and a position of lord i worship you in spirit and in truth that life is good to me right now however even if it's not i'll still trust you yeah i'll still bless you in the middle of the storm yeah and i think i told somebody this earlier today i said sometimes you can obey your way into blessing or obey your way into peace right are into worship right the bible says uh first thessalonians chapter 5 16 through 18 rejoice always pray continually give thanks in all circumstances so if i can do that if i can just be o- obedient i don't even have to feel like it right because sometimes we think i don't feel like worshiping so I, so I shouldn't i don't feel like giving god praise so i so i'm not right that that scripture doesn't say anything about you needing to feel good about it it just says rejoice always pray continuously give thanks in all circumstances so if i can obey that scripture i can uh i can honor god right i can be in that place of worship all the time where i get the when i'm on my best day and when i'm on my worst day because i'm it's a it's a lifestyle and that's the shift that we were talking about earlier yeah. of worship in terms of praise and worship have right. how we came in and yeah 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 how small that is in reality but yeah can we ask mike a question yeah so what has it been like what's the difference between so you in hardship in times of life is good right i'm blessed what what has been the difference or have you seen a difference in like how you worship or your position or or posture in worship yeah i guess it's kind of like uh when you're in the valley and you have to worship and then when you make it to the mountaintop and you have to worship like you think back to the valley (laughs) and it's like when you're at the mountaintop or whatever that mountaintop may be it it does i think it does give you a little bit more gratitude for making it there because you've been in the bottom in the pit and so it's like the heart of worship it's it's kind of like 
when you're in the valley and you're, and you're trying to worship through a difficult situation, you know, there was a lot of times I had to cry through worship. <laughs> like, I, I'm, you know, I'm singing and I'm, I'm praying and mm. it's hard. It's difficult. But when times are good and I can thank him for what he's done and what he's planning to do, I can also think back to God. You know, I, I it almost makes me repent of like and uh, apologetic for like downing him in the in the valley. Mm -hmm. So it's like it, when when I'm when you're praising them in good times, I feel like you get the double benefit. You, you know, you, you get to enjoy what's happening in the natural. That's a good situation. But you also get to think back to the journey of where God's taking you. So it's like. Admittedly, I think I do enjoy obviously praising a little bit more when times are good, but it's um, a little better. It, it 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 does give you a different perspective. That's that's fair. Nah, that's real. It's like even the word says, right? It was good that I was afflicted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Before I was afflicted, I went astray. It, it it was your it was it was the affliction that even caused me to be in the right path. So sometimes it's like we we ah Lord, how can you let this happen? But it's like, if we have the right posture, consider it pure joy when you face trials of many kinds. Testing out your faith produces perseverance, right? And so it's all about understanding and perspective. That's why it's like, you talk about wisdom. Wisdom is, is, is so important. It says, right, and all you're getting, get understanding, right? Get wisdom, right? Because if I have wisdom, if I have understanding, Every, I can navigate everything else in life. Yeah. It's through the it's through the Holy Spirit, through the Spirit who is wisdom guides us into all truth. that guides guides us to all truth, right? And so as I do that, I understand. Okay, circumstance not great, but God, you are great. So I can't limit my praise based on my circumstance. And and even I appreciate you sharing. Like sometimes it's painful. We think if I'm worshiping, it should be a good experience sometimes. Job tore his clothes, shaved his head, fell to the ground, and worshiped. That doesn't seem like a, oh, hallelujah. Yeah, the Bible right. don't give you enough context. There. I'm sure that brother was crying. Like, yeah. I, I, I can't imagine that man going through all that. And obviously, the action, what he did, the Bible writes out, but he had yeah. to be in tears. Like, there's no way you can not be overcome with emotion in that split second but it is good to your point that that was his immediate reaction like yeah that's that's what we should all strive to yeah you know, i'm still working towards that but nah that's a fact bro that's um that's a fact so it's not always going to be comfortable it's not always going to be uh pleasant right as yeah. we suppose and i mean even in the the situations and circumstances that i think you can relate to as well because we both said that they're not you know the drastic or from a worldly perspective <laughs> right. or whatever. Yeah. But even in those moments of hardship and even through those times, like we can look back in hindsight and be like, yeah, God is good because mm -hmm. this disappointment happened, but mm -hmm. on the flip side, this is what happened. Yeah. And we good now. I'm great. Yep. Right. But in the middle of going through that, and I think as Mike mentioned, the importance of having accountability and people around you um, that even in those that in between stage in between uh this affliction and this um coming out of whatever that affliction is or whatever this um place that isn't isn't quite comfortable mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. coming in between that having uh encouraging each other right yeah. um so just allowing that process and journey to take place uh is so important and that's so good so I want to touch on, which we kind of hit earlier, but we didn't get to it, is the worship off, worship on experience, right? <laughs> like worship is when I sing and praise God and say hallelujah, and not worshiping is when I'm not doing that, which is not the case, right? Uh, it says to worship God, right, in spirit and in truth. Um, but I think sometimes when we when we Think about worship, and there is, there is, we're going to we'll talk briefly about the musical singing yeah. psalms, hymns, spiritual songs part of worship. But that's, like I said, it's a very tiny element. Not, I don't want to say tiny, it's, it's, a, it's a good amount. But it, when we think of it really in the scope of the Bible, singing and worshiping in that way is. It's not a big percentage, right, as we might think. Um, 
And so with that, let's talk about what that looks like in real life, right? So sometimes I think we think worship is always what we do, but sometimes worship is what we don't do. Sometimes worship is what we desire to do yeah. and we don't do because it's not in submission to God. Or we think sometimes worship is um, when, you know, I get to do this, da da da, da right? Lift my hands to church, and, right? But then we're mean to people. Are we, you know, we don't have love of God for people, right? Paul said, if I can fathom all things, right? If I can uh, uh, speak in the tongues of, of men or of angels, right? If I can prophesy and understand mysteries, right? But I don't have love, I'm nothing. And so part of worship is loving people and doing that in a way that is pleasing to God. Um, and so let's talk about what worship is practically, right? So has there ever been anything that you had to give up to God or a desire, goal, dream, um, ambition that you had that you said, man, I would love to do this, but like, I can't because of your, this is what you called me to do. I guess candidly, uh, my, my relationship life, <laughs> um, you know, my parents are divorced. Uh, my grandparents, uh, they were married until my grandmother passed away, but they slept in different areas of the house and so I didn't grow up exactly knowing what a good biblical marriage should look like. Now I had my own ideas and unfortunately a lot of it was probably influenced from culture mm -hmm. uh, and so when I when I did get married to, to somebody I love very deeply um, it was difficult for me to understand what the nature of marriage really was supposed to be until I got into it. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I thought I, I thought of love a lot more as a feeling than an action before I got in. And, and once I started talking to people who have been married for a long time, and that's the only way I made it through. So when you get married newly, make sure you connect to somebody that's been in it for a long time because they'll tell you, they'll mm -hmm. show you better. But um, <laughs> I had to understand that love is a choice. And, and having to do that, that is not what I wanted to do. That's mm -hmm. not the way I thought of marriage. That's not the way I came into it. That's not what I was expecting. And so I had to surrender my view of marriage and what it is in the middle of marriage. Like, I mean, it's, it's a really difficult thing. Like, it's, it's one thing to, to surrender that pre-marriage mm -hmm. and be like, okay, now I've, I've refreshed my perspective and I can date with a different perspective. Mm -hmm. But once you've made the commitment and, you know, I, I always did want to make the commitment and not have it be something I pulled back out of. But when you have to completely change the perspective of what you have on marriage on the fly in the marriage, it's difficult. Mm -hmm. And so it, 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 it's, it, take, it took some long, it took some long time uh, to truly surrender my marriage unto God. But once I did, it's been a lot more refreshing. And we still go through stuff. We still have little nitpicks, but it's a, it's a completely different experience once you understand that love is an action and that God is, God is love. So you have to, use mm. the spirit of God to, to love your wife, to love your husband, and uh, have a biblical, biblical marriage that honors him. That's dope, bro. That's dope. I, I, I had this thought while you were talking, right, when we talk about worship and just, our, again, our bodies, right, as living sacrifices, um, health. Yeah. I think sometimes we overlook that element of, of, of worship. How you treat your physical body is a form of worship or not worship right and so i'm talking to me too don't when i say this right you know I'm, I'm talking to me right but what we eat working out not working out that's a form of worship mm -hmm. we've been given a body that is to be used to be a, a vessel of the holy spirit right the holy spirit lives within us and so man it's easy to see how we disappoint God when we curse, when we lie, we cheat, when we steal, and we do the things right. Blah, blah, blah. But sometimes when we eat stuff that we shouldn't eat, ah, I'm gonna regret this later. <laughs> when we eat, when we eat, y'all gonna see me somewhere like that's not what you thought about. <laughs> um, but I might be business. Um, but nah, like what we eat, 
we got to be mindful. Like, yeah, this is the the Holy Spirit lives here. Like, it's not it's not just for pleasure. I remember I had a friend in college. She was a trainer, and she was eating something one day, and I ain't gonna lie, it, it looked nasty. It looked, everybody was like, it looked real nasty, and we was like, yo, you like that? And she said, no. And we was like, she's like, I don't eat for pleasure. She's like, I eat to sustain my body. And she was doing it from a physical, you know, training standpoint. But it's that same understanding of I'm not doing this action to feel good emotionally, right? I'm doing this action to take care of what God has given me. Yeah. And so I'm like, ah, if you can do that with, with fitness in, in mind, imagine how much easier it is to, to have that with worship in mind that what I eat, what I consume, deciding to drink or not drink, to smoke or not smoke, to do drugs or not do drugs, it is all a part of worship. And so it's not a just about, you know, ah, I promise you I'm not gonna like this later. Um, but it's not about, you know, getting those Chick-fil-A fries. Uh, but it's about understanding that this is a place for God to dwell. Let me take care of it. Like if, 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 God were to come over to your house, you would clean it up. So I want my house, my physical body to be clean, temple of the Lord to be clean as well. Um, yeah, y'all got anything? The reason I know that that's true is whenever I decide, because sweets are my, that's my advice. You know, I, I, I need to, I, I go a month long or sometimes month and some days long uh, fast away from sweets because it, it, it just pulls me so much. But whenever I make these decisions to do that, that's when the office always has free donuts, yep. free cookies. <laughs> so, like, you know, it's it's back to Kevin's point. It's like, it's you know, making a choice to eat a cookie isn't sinful. Right. But, like, the fact that I chose to sacrifice, make my body a living sacrifice and not eat the thing that I want to eat, and now all of a sudden there's plenty of it available, that's the enemy trying to, like, make you sin. Because, like, if you, if you yeah. made the decision not to do that and not – you've been tempted with cookies and whatever else is free in the office you have to continuously make that decision not to not to indulge yeah it's crazy so like i know that to be true taking care of your body is part of honoring your guy with a as being a living sacrifice for sure Man, that's so real bro i was i was about to find it i couldn't get to it in time but in, in first corinthians 9 paul talks about discipline right mm. and he talks about his body and he says like i don't just beat the air like a boxer beating aimlessly, right? I don't I don't just run without a direction, yeah. right? He says, but I strike a blow to my body and I discipline myself, I discipline my body and I put it under, I put it under subjection. I make my body under subjection so that after I've preached to others, I myself won't be disqualified. Yeah. And so it's like, sometimes when we think about discipline in that regard, right? He says, I strike a blow to my body. In other words, I cause discomfort to it. So fasting, right? When we fast, it's not comfortable. We we, we be hungry, right? you like, I just want a little, you know what I'm saying? Number one for Chick-fil-A, no, no pickles, you know what I'm saying? Whatever, right? But I strike a blow to my body and make it obedient. Like there's a process in which when you begin to fast and do it more often, you realize it's not necessarily even that it gets easier but is that your body literally becomes trained to to do whatever you tell it to do. So at one point I was doing, I probably need to get back on it. Maybe we can do that in some way. But like I used to fast like every Monday, right? Just a 66 fast. And um, I did it for a season. And at first I'd be like, yo, by by like 12, one, I'm like, bro, I, I'm, I'm hungry. And I keep in mind, there were some days that it was like 12 or 1 that I hadn't even eaten yet. But it's the day you decide to fast that you're extra hungry. Yeah. But I would do it, and it's like, oh, I can't. I don't know if I can. Right? And so it, it's that dependency on God. Like, yo, I, I need you to help me because I'm, I'm struggling. Um, but I noticed after a while that 6 to 6 wasn't as, as I don't want to say bad. Like, fasting is a good thing. Yeah. But it wasn't as difficult. Um in the sense of just the hunger and it wasn't that i got any my body desire any less food it was that my body got used to being told no <laughs> right and so that's what fa part of what fasting does it's not 
necessarily always just to get answers or to get we think like if i fast if i need an answer for something or i fast if i have to do this thing and go somewhere it's like yeah that's good but part of fasting is so that your your flesh can say he, he in control like right mike 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 is in control whatever through the holy spirit whatever mike is supposed to do is going to get done um and so i just encourage you as you go about um praying to fast and how to fast to keep that in mind that it's not it's not this works thing where it's like i gotta earn but it is a let me make sure my body is is subject to the holy spirit in a way that's proper does that make sense anything no i was just going to touch on the fasting piece uh in terms of like seeking those answers as well making sure that we're sometimes we approach fasting as as you were talking about <laughs> making that decision we go into the fast with the decision that or the answer that we have in mind mm -hmm. and we think like lord i'm fasting so you can move in this direction <laughs> so bless this All right. <laughs> Like I'll do it this way. I have like, please put a blessing on it. This is, yeah. this is what it is. But moving from that, having a posture of Lord, what is Your will? Yeah, Your will be done. Yeah. No, and it's like we almost treat fasting as if it's like a cheat code to hear God's voice, and it is in one sense, but it's not in another. Meaning, by disciplining yourself, disciplining your bodies, cutting out distractions cutting out things that uh that 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 hinder you from hearing god you do hear from god but fasting is not a thing of if i fast i better get an answer right. if you treat it like that there's gonna be a times where he doesn't give you an answer because there's times even when you go to it in the right way that you fast and you come out of it with nothing because yeah. that's what god decided to do again he's god i don't we don't write the rules right but there's I, I want to encourage you in that that if you fast and you feel like, oh, I fasted, so I should come out with 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 all knowledge of every mystery on the. No, like sometimes you just fasted. You decided to to sacrifice food for that moment, and and God honors your sacrifice, but it doesn't always mean you get what you want. And He may speak to you about something totally unrelated. Yeah, <laughs> to yeah. what it was. Yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying. But because you've Put your body you put the flesh under submission to the spirit now you're able to hear right um or you're able to hear clearer mm -hmm. because you've eliminated those distractions those impediments to hearing yeah. uh, the voice of of god and so he may speak to you about something completely different yeah and being okay with that that is worship that's being a living sacrament lord i came into this fast thinking mm -hmm. this is what i was going to hear or expecting to hear and you gave me something else that mm. that's what i needed yeah right? no that's good so we got a couple of questions on the on the q a and again if you're out here and you want to um ask some questions you can do that live and if you scan that qr code there's a q a thing you just hit the little post anonymously and then you can ask your question it says i feel very awkward and shy when worshiping alone or in public any advice for overcoming this um it's going to seem like almost like ridiculously practical. Like, yeah, I could figure that out, but it's like push past it and like keep going. Right. So you do anything new is going to be uncomfortable. If I decided to go like we was playing that game. Right. And the first time we came out, we were just like we, we couldn't even really get it. It wasn't even fun because we just were being silly um, and we didn't know how to do it. But even like today, we started to get a group like figure out how okay this is how you do it this is a little cheat like this is a little secrets to it and it became more enjoyable but we had to we had to keep going right if if i said like the first day we brought it out here we weren't good at it it wasn't that fun let me go take it back we would have deprived ourselves from the fun that we had today and so it's the same thing like it's not uh it might not be comfortable um but understand that god it God loves one when you come to him and worship, right? He's never gonna be like, ah, you're not doing it right. Like, ah, no, nah, his his he knows, right? He he knows everything that you're going through, and so he's like, yo, my son, my daughter, the fact that you just came and put everything down that you wanted to do, and you decided to sit down and worship me, like, I'm happy. Um, and so, 
push there, like stay there and and continue to push um because like anything in life if you do it long enough you'll begin to get more comfortable with it i think too you kind of touched on it a little bit but just being being free to worship in the way that you worship right yeah. however god has given it to you yeah. some people jump up and down some people are just quiet um and just with hands lifted or some people kneel um in terms of when we're talking praise and worship or in moments of worship in atmospheres of worship so however god is pressing you to do it in that moment um that's okay like sometimes you may be more active in, in worship that mm -hmm. that just may be where you're at sometimes you may just want to kneel and just be quiet yeah um with hands lifted or, or whatever the case may be but being okay with knowing that it's diversity of gifts even yeah. <laughs> right yeah. diversity in styles of worship yeah, in, in yeah. ways of uh speaking and uh reverencing god the father yeah and and to that it made me think of something else like part of the reason you might feel uncomfortable is because you're comparing your worship to other people yeah. right and so you're like i'll be seeing them at the park maybe well or yeah, at the church like if my worship doesn't look like they that crazy and so right you're using other people's worship as a standard for what your worship should look like which is going to lead to this striving mentality right as my pastor says like you, you begin to strive and try to earn it and it's like yeah. now you you don't even enjoy worshiping because you feel like i'm it's another place that you feel defeated in yeah. right when it's not a place of feeling defeated it's a place where you should be the most comfortable the most um you should have the most joy because you're in the presence of God, yeah. right? Where, and where the spirit of God is, where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. So that should be the, when you're worshiping God, that should be the place where you're like, yo, I, I, I can stay here, right? I love it here. So make sure to not compare to, to other people's worship. Yeah, I mean, the, the two points that they just said are really important. One, there's no right way to worship, right? Yeah. God, man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. So it's possible and you know, kind of having been in the, the worship space a little bit now i've gone to places where people are flamboyant and you know loud and they sing and they see they sing well but you can tell that the, the spirit and the, and the nature of why they're doing it is not there so i think god would be a lot more pleased with somebody who's quiet and just you know worshiping quietly but their heart their heart posture is correct than somebody who's like really talented and flamboyant yeah, yeah. but the, the spirit the, the spirit with which they're doing it is not pure and um, I guess from a practical perspective, because I've had to deal with this as well, because there, there is a freedom when you hear your own voice out loud. Like the reason that the enemy wants you to be quiet is because the freedom that you experience when you sing aloud is it, it confuses the enemy and it, it thwarts his plan. So practically, you can just close your eyes. Like when it's when the other point I was going to say is that worship is supposed to be between you and God. So. If you close your eyes, it really makes the the point that God. It doesn't matter where I am. It doesn't matter who's mm -hmm. talking or what's around me. Lord, this moment right now is about me and you. So I'm just gonna close my eyes and I'm gonna worship you in that way. It, it takes the 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 sense of comparing yourself to other people. It takes the sense of other people are around and listening to me. It takes that a little bit away. Yeah. So just practically, just close your eyes. Yeah, you know I mean? that, that's helped me in, in the past for sure. That's good, bro. I w I wanted to capture what you were saying. That heart posture between proud and arrogant versus humble right this is not specifically talking about prayer i mean uh worship is prayer but it all applies right uh i'm, a, I'm in luke 18 uh i'm gonna read through it real quick but i'm gonna start at verse 9 and he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others two men went up to the temple to pray one a pharisee and the other a tax collector the pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all of my possession, all that I possess. And the tax collector standing afar off would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted. So it's like, yo, he's like, the tax collector's like, hey, I could never be like this guy. And, and re on the outside, 
he may look like he has a better life, but he has it all together, right? Tax collectors at this time were despised, right? It's not H and R Block, but they they you didn't want to like they didn't have a good reputation, right? And so yeah, the IRS. <laughs> no, they are a little bit despised. Sorry if you work for the IRS, but we love you. Uh, but th this is a despised person, and so the Pharisee is like, this could never be me. Um, meanwhile, the tax collector has this posture of humility, and that's what God honors. So it, to your point, Mike, even in worship and prayer and whatever you do with, uh, unto the Lord, do it in spirit and in truth. The truth is right now I'm, I'm learning how to worship. I'm learning, okay, let me, let me be obedient to the scripture. It does say lift, lift, lift up your hands, right? It does say sing out to God, right? And so I can be obedient. It might be uncomfortable right now, but hey, here's where I am. Let me just take a next step. Sometimes we try to be like, oh, here, excuse me. But sometimes it's like, okay, you know, my pastor talks about this all the time. Like you might, today you might be right here. That this, the little hands up worship, that's it. That's all you got. That's cool. All right, let's push past it next time. Let me, let's go, let's go a little bit here. Let's go, next time let's go higher, right? Next time jump up right what like i don't know what it is for you but wherever you are there's a step that's gonna be uncomfortable but you have to take that to get past to the next level right it's just like you 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 anytime you go to a new place or a new level right it might cause uncomfort but the step is required in order for you to get to where um you want and like we said earlier when you praise god like that you benefit more than he does <laughs> right again he's god he loves your worship but at the end of the day it's your chains that break when you praise god right it's your heaviness that is lifted off when you give god a praise and so make sure that you're not hindering even what god has for you by worshiping him so um and then the last thing for that question we kind of went all the way around but it's it's very um it's hard to do something where you don't know how, right? It's, it's hard to enjoy doing something where you don't know how to do it. Um, like, you know, I know, Che, you grew up playing basketball. I grew up playing basketball. My senior, my, my senior year in high school, my, uh, the football coach somehow ended up recruiting me on the football team. He was like, you know, you're a decent athlete. You should play. I was like, I don't want to do it. He asked me. He was the PE coach, so he asked me every day. I'm like, yo, I'm good. And eventually I was just like, I'll do it. When I tell you it was the worst season of my life, bro, I hated it because I didn't. One, I, you know, I, I watched football like regular, but I didn't, I'm not a football fan. I, I didn't study football. And so because I didn't know all of the mechanics, I didn't know it wasn't enjoyable for me. And so. Part of part of that is just understanding. So let's give you a, a little cheat code to to worship. Let's go to Psalm 100. Uh, we'll be wrapping up a little bit, but let's go to Psalm 100. Uh, I'll start from verse one. It says, "Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands." So okay, that's a that's an instruction, right? Make a joyful shout. That doesn't mean you necessarily have to just yell out to the fullest of you. But it is saying out loud, make your joy known to God, right? Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is good. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Here we go, verse 4. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. So this is a, if you just read it like this, it, you're like gates, courts, I don't know what that means, right? It's a formula. So, formula, quote unquote. Um, enter his gates. We talk about presence. The Bible uses a lot of um, imagery and metaphors, right? And so you would have like inner court, outer court, holy of holies, right? Or outer court, inner court, holy of holies in the temple. This just represented uh, levels of depth of God's presence, right? And so, um, like it says, enter to his gates with thanksgiving. So 
his gates is around where you say, okay, God, I thank you for what I have. So what that looks like is, Lord, thank you that I have breath in my body. God, I thank you that I'm alive. I could be any, I could be messed up. I could be dead. God, I thank you for the clothes on my back, the shoes on my feet, the food that I have, the friends. It's thanking God for what you have. That's how you enter into one uh, realm of his presence. And then enter into his courts with praise. And so when I begin to praise him, I praise him for who he is, right? So I, I, I thank him for what he's done and what I have. And then I go into a deeper realm where I, I, I praise you for who you are. God, thank you that you are good. Thank you that you are perfect, God, that you're all powerful, Lord, that you uh, love me despite my flaws. Now we're beginning to thank him for his person, like the person of God. And so if you're ever like you're trying to worship or trying to pray, and you're like, I don't know what to do. Go back to Psalm 100 and remember, OK, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start by expressing thankfulness, gratitude, appreciation. Then I'll go deeper and I'll let God know who he is. I'll, and if you need to do that, Psalm is a great book. Like yeah. it is full of praises unto God. It's full of, man, I'll be reading like some of the stuff that David wrote. I'll be like, yo, how did he even come up with that? imagery are that that those, those words he was i mean he was a true um psalm is a true poet a true man of the pen like his, his pen game was kind of it, it was tight right um and there are some other psalms written by other people in there but the majority are, are of david and so if you if you're short of things to actually pray and give god thanks for literally i mean there's a list if you google it like the different types of songs you can look up psalms of praise or thanksgiving or this but if you scroll through Psalms and just flip open your Bible, you you're bound to find um some ways and and uh formulas of, of prayer and praise as as they're written. Uh, anything to add to that? I mean there's some Psalms of Lamentation in there too. So there, like, are, there, there are there, there are there are times when he's like yeah. on his face worried about the situation, but he always ends, but God, you are good. Yeah. So yeah. like, that's always the formula too, in that situation. Facts. A yeah. Acknowledge the situation, but always acknowledge that God is greater than the situation. That's real. Uh, another question says, how would you recommend we prepare new believers on how to trust God's promise when they experience trials and tribulations? Um, I think when, 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 it comes to God and you want to get expectation, it's best to look at experience. So we look when we want hope for the future, we look at the past. So what has God done? It says they overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. And so think of the things that he's done in your life um, that have been good. The fact that you are here, the fact that you're alive. Um, ask other people for a testimony like if you're a new believer go up to another believer that, that has been saved for a while and say why is god so good like what has he done for you and i guarantee i, I guarantee you that they, they should have something that a story or a moment or just their perspective of god's goodness that will make you say all right this i could you know this is a god worth worshiping and so um you got to understand his word, though, because everything is all every even what they tell you should all still be based on the foundation of his word. And so when I look at all of the things he's done and then I look at what I'm going through, I'm like, oh, this is you got it. Not to say my, it's nothing, but the Red Sea, like we talk about the Red Sea. We talk about all of the amazing miracles that God has done in about water to wine. What's my thing? to you a god that can do everything and so remembering what he's done through scripture anything that i know i'll be going i'll be i just be i know y'all gotta just deal with me cool all right so um we're gonna wrap up i know that we talked about worship right and not singing in praise right but there is that and the bible um uh, encourages us to participate in the songs psalms songs and spiritual hymns and spiritual songs right 
And so music is a part of worship. So I, through all we're saying, I don't want you to hear, oh, well, let me not worship God through song, through singing, through worship and praise that way. That's not what we're saying, but let's be real. If if you have a timeline of your day, the amount you spend singing and praising God in that regard is it's not that bit right. We're we're con- like you're sitting here. You're not sitting here singing out right now. You will be in a little bit, but not now. Um, and so if you think about the, it's, it's a small amount of your percentage of your day that you actually spend singing out to God, listening to music. Um, but it's really that lifestyle of worship, that posture that I'm worshiping you at all times, um, that your praise will continually be in my mouth, that no matter what's going on, God, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you praise. That's, that's worship. That's what the father, um, rejoices in and he gets happy. Like I just be, I'll be at the store. I'll just be singing. I'll be like, I don't care. Like I, it don't even matter if you can sing that well, some people get caught up. I know when I was younger, like my dad and my brother, like they, they could sing pretty well, right? And so I got caught up on like, I think it ain't that good. So I, w- I would diminish my, my singing um, because it didn't sound that good. But I'm like, the, the Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. It don't say make a good sounding one. He'll like, that, the rest, that's all him. Like he, he, he loves the sound of your worship regardless of what it sounds like. So. Don't worry about, you know, if you hit the note right, if you did that or whatever, like that, that's that God doesn't care about that. But it's about you making a joyful noise. So when you are walking around the store or you at work, like and you sing and pray, God, you're good or you're worthy. or You just sing to him or just praise like he loves that more than anything. And so um, don't get caught up on like the perfection of worship because you'll you'll limit yourself. And again, you're limiting you. You're not limiting God. So. Um, any final thoughts? They laughed because I was going to do a little Q&A thing, but I'm like, uh, does anybody have a question they want to ask like right now? If so, she can, she can bring you a mic real quick. You got to wait a little bit because they'd be like, ah, if I count to three and he doesn't do it, then I won't say anything. <laughs> All right, cool. Cool, cool. So, let's um, uh, let's pray. We'll pray and then uh, we'll transition into worship. And so, again, if you have to, if you have to go, feel free to do so. But we'll transition into worship, worship, and begin to just give God praise um, here at the park. And I know it's like, oh, this is this is different. Yeah, it is. Uh, but in the Book of Acts, they 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 worship God on one accord wherever they were at like you don't need you don't need to be in a church building um to worship god now you should right there is benefit from being at church and going into a church but worship is wherever you are if i'm there i'm worshiping um so let's pray lord god we thank you we love you god we we worship you in this moment, God. We lift yes. up our voice. We open up our mouths, God, and we just say thank you, Lord. We thank, thank you, God, you, for Lord, what God. you've done. Thank you, God, for who you are, God. Thank you for the, the many blessings that you've given into our lives, God. Yes, thank Lord. you for um, who you are, God. And so we'll be obedient to the scripture, God, that says, Lord, that, that uh, God, we'll, your praises will continually be in our mouths, yes, God, Lord. that we'll rejoice always, pray continually, pray continuously, give yes, thanks Lord. in all circumstances, yes, God. Lord. Lord, we re- repent even for um, making our worship circumstantial, God. Yes, Lord. For only worshiping you, God, when, when when things were great, Lord, but then when things turned around and weren't the best, God, when we were in the valley, God, depriving you of worship, Lord. God, when we turn our hearts to you and say, God, we will praise you, Lord. Yes, we will Lord. praise you, God, regardless of the circumstance or situation, Lord, God, but that we uh, will... will uh, submit ourselves to you, God, that we will present our bodies as living sacrifices, yes, holy Lord. and acceptable, pleasing unto you, God, that, that you would accept our true and proper worship, God, our reasonable service, God, to you, yes, Lord, Lord, that we would, uh, God, each day, God, just say, I'm yours, Lord. Yes, Lord. Do with me what you will, God. And we will remind ourselves, God, that we are nothing but clay, God, and you are the potter, Lord, that for without you, we would be nothing, God. As your word says, Lord, that uh, Jesus, you are the vine, we are the branches, and apart from you, we can do nothing, God. Let us not become arrogant or proud and forget that uh, if it wasn't for your hand on us, if it wasn't for your spirit in us, God, that 
we could do nothing, Lord. Yes, Lord. So let us turn to you, God. Let us remember, God. Let us worship you in humility and understanding that you are a great, awesome, mighty, all-powerful God, Lord. Yes, Lord. And that is a privilege that we get to worship you, Lord. Yes. Forgive us for the times where we don't feel like worshiping you and we don't, God. Yes. But allow us to push past our feelings, God, and worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord. Let us yes, put on God. the belt of truth, God, um, that, that will remind us that, the, that you are worthy of praise at all times, God. Yes, God. And there's no circumstance in which you're not worthy, God. We um, just rebuke even a lie of the enemy that says that uh, we shouldn't worship when, when things aren't going well or that uh, when we experience death or loss or grief or um, pain or anything that isn't pleasant, God, that you aren't good, Lord, because yes, you are Lord. all you are always good, Lord, and you work all things um, together for the good of us that love you, God, and are yes, called Lord. according to according to your purpose, your plan, God, for us, Lord. So we just thank you, God. We lift up our praise, God, and we give you yes, worship, God. God, and say we are thankful, God. We're thankful, God. We're a thankful people, Lord, yes, that Lord. Um, get the opportunity to worship you, God. And so we just consider it a um, a joy, God, to yes, be. Lord. In your presence, Lord, um, help us to remain in this posture. Let us not just have it at the park or at church on Sundays, God, but on Monday, Tuesday, through Monday through Sunday, God, we'll continuously worship you, God, yes, that we'll give you praise, God, that we might be walking around the store and somebody might be like, what's wrong with this dude or this girl? Because he's just singing like it's we in the middle of church. God, let us worship on fire as david yes, did god lord. and let us as he said become even more undignified lord that we would uh that we would be humiliated even in our own eyes god that we would uh, not in a traditional sense god but that we would not care lord yes, that we yes, would just lord. say we don't care whatever it is that you want us to do we'll do um and that we'll forget whatever it is that men um is worried about lord so we just say thank you lord we love you and it's in jesus name that we do pray amen amen, amen. amen. um if you're watching this episode online and you haven't given your life to christ and you're like yo i i need this is what i need to do um i just want to take to take a second to pray with you right jesus has come he's died and he's risen for you for your sins so that you may be made right so that you may um enter eternal life with him and so if that is you and you're saying i don't know if if, if i passed away right now i don't know if i would go to heaven um and you want eternal life with jesus just say this prayer after me and just say lord jesus thank you for saving me thank you for saving me thank you for your sacrifice thank you for your sacrifice thank you for your love Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your blood. I accept your sacrifice. I accept your sacrifice. And I repent of my sins. And I repent of my sins. I turn away from my wicked ways. I turn away from my wicked ways. And I run to you. And I run to you. Accept me with open arms. And accept me with open arms. God, thank you for loving me despite my flaws. God, thank you for loving me despite my flaws. Lord, thank you for accepting me knowing all of the things that I have. Lord, thank you for accepting me despite knowing all the things that I've done. So God, Lord, I thank you for your perfect love. So God, I thank you for your perfect love. And I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I, today I'll be forever changed. Today I'll be forever changed. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Remember to make today worth living. Peace. Hey.